Hey everyone, it's Nick with Us vs. Herd. If it's your first time here, like the content, hit subscribe if you want to get notifications for when we go live or do watch lists or any video really, tap the bell. And if you want to join the UVH fam, links are below to our Discord, Facebook options, training group, Patreon, you name it. Links are in the description below. If you're here right now, say word up. I see Luke, Jeff, J-Rob, what's going on? Happy Thursday. We getting it. Another 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 semi flat day in the markets today. If you made money today, comment got paid. If you lost money today, comment learned a lesson. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah, I mean, t today on like spy, just we gapped up, faded, and and the one thing that the one thing that I will point out on on spy today is right here we had. I mean, today what was the volume today? Today the volume on spy was. Oops, that's not spy. That's Netflix. Today the volume on spy was um, forty five million. So we're a little, we're pretty low on the volume, but this four million this four million um, volume candle right here, you know, really kicked in. It was we were head back down to two ninety eight, and then the volume just kicked in, saved it briefly, but we had a slow grind up all afternoon after that. Yo HD, what's going on? Made it out on Netflix and PM call credit spreads, nice. Selling premium, sometimes selling premium is the way to be. Yo, Reworts, what's going on? How we doing? What's going on? <laughs> All right, let's get let's get let's get into the meat and the potatoes. <laughs> Just woke up for midnights. Well, good morning, good afternoon, whatever you want to say, Andres. Again, if you made money today, comment got paid. If you lost money today, comment learn a lesson. Now that quite a few more people are joining, you guys are all late, two minutes late. Sorry, right. I'm, I'm late to my own stream sometimes. Um, today, today actually was a pretty flat day for me. I think I ended the up. I ended the day up. I mean, I ended the day down twenty five bucks. Um, when, when it's when it's all said when it's when it's all said and done here, um, we'll go through some. We'll go through some of these trades here. Um, you know, really, really was it, you know, really came down to when the, the today's titles, the options trading mistakes added up and, you know, it was due to three mistakes today, which I'll go over with Disney, Nvidia and Roku, three mistakes today, you know, it cost me a hundred, hundred and thirty, hundred and forty dollars not, you know, um, and that's not including the profits. You know what I mean? Like it's it's, and then I had some right. I have some open positions right now on CGC, um, GS, IBM, and 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 Netflix currently. <laughs> so friends, I got I got I just got a cut. I just got back from a cut. Um, but kind of go through kind of go through these things here. Um, okay, so Disney was my first trade. Let, let, let me kind of clean this up for you because I know it's hard I know it's hard for you guys to see so Disney was my first trade today and I don't know why so I you, you guys know why uh, I, I mostly trade off the 15 I trade mostly off the 15 minute candles today I was like hey I'm gonna try something different on Disney I'm gonna do the five minute candles and I ended up losing and let me bring up Disney here on the five minute you know, there's a reason why I don't try trade the five minute candles, and this is this is the reason why, is I got faked out here on this. It was, it was going well here on the five minute candles. You know, I bought in at 8.55, so I bought in here, pushed up higher, and then we had a big fat red candle before it started to push back up again. I had the I had the 133 call. I sold for 21 cents. Bought it for 33 32 cents. Sold it for 21 cents. Um, So, so that's, that's the first lesson now, 
because because of because of Disney, um, you know, if I if I followed the if I followed the 15 minute candle here, you know, we would have been we would have been fine on the 15 minute candle. But because I was trading the five minute candle, I got a little I got a little freaked out and I I sold because I thought we were going to revisit down to like 130.50, and I didn't want to I didn't want to take I didn't want to take the I didn't want to take the loss. So I got out with like a small, you know, I only lost what, what I lose on Disney, 30 bucks. But like I said, like the, the, it doesn't matter how much you lose. It's kind of like your consistency. So if you're consistently, if you have back to back losers, you're going to, it's not that I lost a lot of money or anything. It's, you know, this is, this is all about you as a trader and over time, you know, anybody can make big gains. Anybody can have big losses, but what you do over the course of your career as a trader, what you do over time is what matters, you know? What's up, lost 425 at IBM today? Dude, why'd you gamble why'd you gamble the earnings like that, man? Yeah, I'm just I have an IBM position right now covered as well. Um but in terms of Disney, so that's if, if you're gonna change your strategy, paper trade, paper trade. I didn't paper trade. Luckily, it only cost me thirty bucks. But you know, it would have been fine. You know, looking at those Disney, I had the what did I have? One thirty threes. So now they're back down. They're back down to break where I was break even, like thirty one, thirty two. Bought them for thirty two cents. But at one point, I mean, these went. So I, I had a great, I had a great entry. This just cost me. You know, a couple hundred percent. You know, I had a good, I had a really great entry down in here. Could have wrote it up. I probably would have sold it like 60, 70 cents though. But, you know, it went as high as 90 cents before coming back down to 31 cents. I mean, so this was a, this was a good trade, good example that, you know, if you're going to train, if you're going to change your strategy, you should paper trade. And I didn't follow my own advice there. And I, I, <laughs> I went in. Um, next up, next trade on deck um teva so teva kind of goes into yesterday so teva teva was an interesting trade for me so let me pull it up here i actually made 40 percent profit on it bought it for nine cents yesterday sold it for 13 cents and teva teva is one of those stocks that you know one of one of the strategies that i've been kind of implementing since the market has been slower is relying more on swing trades kind of slowing things down you know, today today was kind of another reminder of why you need to slow things down and take a step back sometimes. And Teva Teva kind of reconfirmed, you know, the swing trading, the swing trader in me. I used to swing trade a lot up until a couple of months ago when the market was really hot. But now that the market's slowing down, probably going to go back to more um, swing trading. So let me kind of back this trade up here a little bit. You know, on Teva, Teva had a pretty pretty big day. Um, but when I bought, so I bought next week's expiration. I actually bought next week's. These are up 800%. So I bought next week's eight eight calls, eight straight calls for next week. When? How did you lose? When did you put it on? Oh, D Disney. I just I I just exited. I had I exited poorly on the five minute chart. Um, but I made 40% on Teva. So Teva Teva I bought yesterday got sucked in if you guys remember from the live stream yesterday i got sucked in right in here and this you know teva teva for me it's it, it's a good stock it moves a lot for something under ten dollars i don't typically trade stocks under 10 i typically don't even trade stocks under like twenty dollars generally but um in terms of teva 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 moves a lot it does it does have really good movement for a seven dollar stock or a single digit stock so i've been trading it quite a bit you know, been doing fairly well with it. Um, yesterday, I got sucked into this, but the, what was the shocking part is I bought it for nine cents when Teva was up in here, seven thirty. These came down to three cents yesterday, and kind of what like for for me as a swing trader, one of the things that I I like to do is okay if immediately if I'm swing if I know that I'm going to swing trade this position, I'll come back tomorrow and average down if it's still something I believe in. I still believe in the trade. However, the price action didn't, didn't go my way when I put the trade on. Um, but I don't go back. I don't go in directly and start, start like averaging down my position like crazy. Cause that's how you can also get in trouble. Cause this could also get down to like six fifty or, or $6 or whatever the case is. Yes. Um, this morning, even though it didn't, but so I bought, I bought the position for nine cents. It came down to three cents. 
I was going to I was going to average down this morning, but it was already back. I was already back to I was already back to break even. So I'm like, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy more now that I'm back to break even. I'm just gonna kind of wait out because it was still it was still a trade that I believed in. Um, it kind of struggled this morning. You know, I was around you know eight and nine cents, ten cents a contract. I paid nine cents, and then we started to rip up. I sold on this candle here at 9:10 right at the top here I sold this and you know I always sell these type of candles so I didn't feel bad about selling like oh you missed a lot of profits because these went up I sold them for 13 cents they came all the way up to 28 cents but yesterday I had a little bit of PDS PTSD because I, I bought them and they went down. I was actually afraid because we were back around this level again around Teva and it was consolidating. I'm like, okay, if it comes back down to like the low sevens, I'll reload. Um, however, that was not the case today. They did have an upgrade this morning, which also helped them out. But, you know, it was pretty flat pretty much all day. You know, I felt pretty good about taking profits. I thought, okay, if we, if we, if we retrace back down to like 720, 710 area, I wouldn't mind buying some more. I wouldn't mind buying those eight contracts again for next week. Um, however, that's not the case, but you can see here, this is a pretty big mover. If I were to have averaged down, you know, this this would have been, this would have been quite the profit. I'm not, I'm not complaining about 40%, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. 40%, 40% is a really good profit, but you know, you can see, you can see that this was, this was definitely a trap. So I'm glad, glad I held on. What would have made things salty is if I if if like oops what happens a lot of times though if if I wasn't swing trading this position if I was if I was going to um, day trade this position I would have caught losses you know yesterday at like eight nine set or like seven nine cents definitely at five cents I wouldn't have held on to three but since I was swing trading it that's why I held because I still believed in the in, in the the one year chart the longer term chart. Do you ever write contracts or do you always buy? Um, so Luke, I used to sell a lot of premium and I kind of got away from it mainly due to just not enjoying it as much. However, the market does call, there is a, there is, the market does call for that strategy quite often. And I've been kind of on the fence about bringing that back into my trading strategy. I think that you know, for me, one of the things that I've been doing over the last few months is exclusively day trading. And I don't necessarily think that's the best method, especially when volatility is low. So I definitely think that, you know, for me, I'm going to be day trading, but I'm going to be day trading uh, smaller sizes, aiming for like the 20 to 30% profit, which I hit quite a few targets on that today. Um, and then I'm going to um, swing trade and then sell premium probably more like long term. Um, so I'm going to be mixing in a lot of different strategies uh, coming up here in Q4 and Q1 of next year. I'm just I actually took I don't, if you're new to the if you, if you're new to the stream here I actually did take like four months off and I'm back I've been back at it since August. So Nick I have a long call position at 18. Do you think it can break the 40 price mark? AT T is a tough one. AT T is a tough one. You know, that's right. That's right. I mean, it could break, but I don't. It, it's tough. AT T is always a, always a tough trade. I mean, I like that you have you have a really long. Dan, I did. Daniel, I did. Um, I like that you have a really long time to get there. But October twentieth, I would wait to see what the earnings do. You know, I would wait to see what the earnings do. Earnings could bring in here if it retraces back down to 35, maybe average down, and then when it comes back up to 38, sell for a profit. But, I mean, that's what I would do. That's what I would do for AT&T. AT&T, you know, it, it started to break out. It's been the same price for years. Started to break out. Manny, what's up? So, that's what I would do. If if earnings bad, let's say it comes back down to thirty five, I would average on my position. Hopefully, hopefully it grinds back up to thirty eight. But right now, it's really just stopping out here. Just really kind of crapping out, kind of like kind of like Microsoft. Really, just kind of stuck. I mean, I think overall the stock market is stuck in general until we can until we can get some positive momentum with either a, a trade deal or some economic reports. And right now, none are really helping our cause here. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, kind of moving on from Teva, 
Next thing I did was J and J. So J and J was another one. So J and J, I did, uh, I, I, I kind of traded together in terms of pharma. J and J, where I liked with with Johnson and Johnson on their one year, I only made like fifteen percent on this one, but I was actually pretty negative yesterday on the position. So this was another trade that was uh, swing trading. I bought this for next week as well. I liked that we had the breakout here. I thought we were going to move higher. That's why I bought the 138. And we, I mean, we did move higher today. But <clears throat> yesterday, it wasn't looking so good. So yesterday, same thing with Teva. You know, it really just crapped out in the day. And I could have averaged down. You know, let's see. I had the 138 calls for next week. Um, good thing I sold. I sold for 99 cents. We're now going for 62. Always take your profits. Take your profits. So I actually caught the top pretty good, um, but I could have averaged down again. As you can see here, it did hit 40 cents. I bought, I paid 84, so I bought that yesterday at, I bought it at 8.46 a.m. So I bought it on this candle right in here um, for 84 cents, and then it came down, so that got cut in half. So this was another swing position. Averaging down would have been would have been the play here. You know this because this went up to 116. So if I average down, so if I had 84, let's say I bought one more, or two more, my aver I could have brought my average down to like like 60, 60 cents, maybe 70 cents. Came back up for almost you know 80 80 80 percent winner. But I don't like to average down. Like if I have something, like I said, if I have if I have trades that I'm swing trading and they're more than a week away. I try to play them low and slow. I try to average down the next day or the day after. I don't try to, for swing positions and, and trades that you're expecting to work out over time, you don't want to just go all willy nilly and just start loading up on contracts because this could have easily, like I said with Teva, this could have easily been down from 135, we come back down to 133, and then we could have been in trouble and I would have rather averaged down at like 133 than I did at 135, right? Um, so Luke, I trade pretty much all day, every day. Um, I do own other businesses, other streams of income. You know, most traders do have other streams of income because I mean, you can rely on the income of trading and then you may have bad months. So, but it doesn't matter if you're a trader or you have a nine to five or you, I think for any person having multiple streams of income is, is the only way you can really, really survive. In this in this type of world that we live in otherwise you're just gonna kill yourself working all day every day if you don't have multiple streams of income you're gonna get in trouble like if you have a if you have a nine-to-five and you get laid off and you had one stream of income you're gonna be in trouble you know what I mean so you know some people some people take pride that they do one thing full-time such as trading um, but for me I think it's a greater feat if you have multiple streams of income making you money um, okay, getting into what was the next one? Okay, so Roku, getting into some of the mistakes here. Roku, Roku, let's talk about Roku here. <laughs> um, Roku, Roku was a disaster of a trade um, today, and this is this is one of the mistakes that cost me. I mean, I'm I lost some money. Roku and Nvidia, and then I'll talk about Netflix in a little bit here. Netflix, we had some good trades, but um, Roku and Nvidia. We're kind of the back-to-back -back losers. Um, bought it for dollar eleven, sold it for fifty-two cents, and it was the one twenty-nine put. And what I was looking for on on Roku, <laughs> I guess. I mean, Roku right now is more of a buy the dip stock than shorting. I mean, you can make money both ways, but you know what I was looking at here was we had a pretty nice dip down to one thirty came back up to 134 and this 130 rejection 134 rejection level we hit we hit yesterday pre-market it dropped we hit it again afternoon it dropped it hit it again pre-market today it dropped so it made a retest and it was dropping we were we were we were profitable on that position on the on the 129 put for tomorrow Man, well, good thing I sold 52 because now these are only 23, 20 cents. Not good either way, but if you're going to lose money, 
you don't you don't want to lose the whole thing. Um, so I sold I sold up in here, um, but you can see these just these just drop like a rock today. And I was not expecting this huge bar here at, at 10 a.m. Central. 10 a.m. Central. I was not expecting this huge bar just to freaking rip through that 134. What I should have done is I should have taken the position off and then and then bought some calls instead I just I was kind of disgusted and I took the position off I didn't go back into Roku <laughs> that's my only trade but you know that's that's kind of the thing like when you're day trading you should try to cover up your mistakes and um, you know this from from a from a from a trading strategy it seems pretty sound we were coming back down I thought I was gonna sell like around 130 again I wasn't trying to push it to 129 but then all of a sudden you know, within an hour, 9.39, I put the position on. So I start, when I started to come back down, put the position on, I thought things were going pretty well until until we just ripped back up. And, you know, when you have candles like this reverse on you, there's really no way to salvage the position. You just kind of got to get out. Yo, tone, Tone's Crib, what's going on? If you're here now, say what up. If you guys enjoy and join the live stream, help me out. Hit the like button. I would appreciate it. Um, and then Nvidia was the next the next trade that that was that was uh, that we apped up. And Nvidia Nvidia was one of those trades that I knew better, but I still went long anyways, right? So I bought it for dollar eight, lost, and I lost another fifty cents on this contract. I bought the one ninety seven fifty call, which was which was not smart on my part. Okay, so. Going to the 197.50 call. Now, <clears throat> yeah. now it's now 30 cents. Okay, so what? So I've missed my opportunity on Nvidia. I, the reason why I went long is so the market was green and I thought that was going to bounce here, like the 193 area, and that was not the case. You know, we we should have we should have been short this last couple of days. One ninety nine dropped. Another again, one ninety eight dropped today. It hit hit almost one ninety eight before it dropped. You know, in retrospect, you know, being short was was the way to be here. Um, you know, starting to climb back up, but it just kept kept getting rejected. So this was another this was another trade today that you know. The mistake, the mistake here. I bought in at 918, thinking we were going to. It was started to bounce up here, so it started to bounce. I, um, you know, the, the mistake here is it's making lower highs. So we had a high here, we had a high here, we had a high here, we had a higher. It was making all the signs to buy puts. It was making all the signs to buy puts. Instead, I bought calls. You know. Yo, Kit, man, thanks for the twenty bomb, man. Thanks for the twenty dollars. Appreciate you. Miss, miss seeing your face in the Discord and trading with you every day. I lost my Nvidia one ninety puts. Yeah, I mean, this this was a in, in retrospect, this is an easy short, but I figured I would. I was I was thinking that it might bounce because it came down to like the one ninety three area. I thought that we would can kind of come down to here. I mean, I'm sorry, into like the one ninety five area. I thought that was going to come down to the one ninety five area, maybe bounce, but we went as low as one ninety two today. You know, this is this is another one when you're wrong day trading, flipping your position might not have been a bad idea. So if, when I when I when I discovered I was wrong. You know, I cut I cut my losses within 20 minutes, but you know, the, at that point the damages were already done. I bought I sold at 940, so I sold it right right in here. Thankfully, I sold it before we had this next leg down. But it would have been beneficial if I if I it's kind of like Goroku though. I wasn't if I wasn't I wasn't really feeling I, <laughs> what I did here was wrong. So I just I just I never re-entered Nvidia. But you know, re-entering it puts would have paid off because then thankfully. I got out because then we had this next leg down from 130, 194 all the way down to 192. You know, so that that was another trade that, like, those mistakes. If you're looking at your PL, like those mistakes over the over a course of the day, those things should just those shouldn't happen. But as you can see, 
they can define whether you're red or green on the day. Cause then once you go red, let's say you're going red, then you're trying twice as hard to go back to green on the day. So, you know, that's, a, that was just a, that was just a trade that shouldn't have happened. Kind of like with, with Roku. I mean, Roku, I felt like it was more sound and then it was just the, just the volume that got in the way. But this one, this one definitely the fundamentals were there for shorting and I chose to go long and, um, that's what happens. Um, HD, so HD actually was a trade that I salvaged. Um, this was another. This was a trade that I did switch my positions on. Um, so I was trading the calls, realized that I was wrong. I, I switched the put. So I, I did end up losing a dollar overall on that position. So I did end up losing a dollar overall in that position, but you know we we came back. So I had the I had the two thirty seven fifty calls, and then I had the two thirty five puts. So we we were able to get our money back. So if if the thing is if you have losses, try to get you know don't try to get all your money back at once because sometimes you dig your, yourself in a deeper hole. But in this case, I did see that I was able to dig myself out a little bit on this one. So you know. HD gapped up. I thought we were going to kind of consolidate around here like 236 and push back up to 237.50 area. That was not the case. So I took my position off and then I bought some puts in and at 11 at 11.06 I sold. I took I took the 30%. You know, with with after you have mistakes, it's very important to start becoming consistently profitable after that. So, you know, with Roku, Nvidia and HD had three losses, you have to start getting back to the discipline. So I was really, at this point in my day, I was really trying to get back to 20 to 30% and capping my gains at 20 to 30% for day trades. You know, we really wanted to start building that confidence up and, you know, it did save me. So buying those puts and, and taking those profits, you know, 66 cents into 78 cents, you know, it wasn't big, but it's really about building that confidence back up. So if you're having losses, you need ways, small ways to build that confidence back up. You don't want to like, let's say you lost $200. Then you go in, okay, I'm going to go in to another trade. I'm going to risk more money. Then you lose on that one. And then you go into another trade, you risk more to try to get back. And then you, you dig yourself sooner or later. You're like, hey, man, I'm like a thousand or $2,000 in the hole here. What happened? You know, you need small confidence boosters to really narrow down the strategy because you may not be seeing the market right um right now you may you may your strategy may not be the right strategy for this type of market so that's why it's important to really to really scale back a little bit so for netflix netflix i had some back-to-back -back winners here let me get the um okay let's see here netflix where are you okay so netflix I had some back-to-back -back winners on Netflix today, and I went <laughs> I went in a third time, and so far I'm still in that position. But if you guys are looking at Netflix, we had um, Netflix. I was also scalping for like 20 to 30 percent as well, which you know was pretty pretty effective on. You know I had the 290 put, bought for dollar 25, sold for dollar 54. Then I had the 287.50 put, bought for dollar three, sold it for dollar thirty three. So I was really, I was really, you know, after taking those losses, I'm glad that I stayed really disciplined. However, I went back into, I should have just stayed out. I went back into Netflix. I bought the 285 put for dollar thirteen, and so far that that trade is not really work, working out. Um, you know, I do think that we, we could potentially head lower tomorrow. I think we could get down to maybe like the 287 area, and then I'll probably try to get out of that. So we'll see what hap we'll see what happens with that trade. I was planning on swinging swinging that position anyways. Um, right now we're kind of playing with profits, but you know you don't want to keep t telling yourself, oh I'm going to play with profits, and then you end up losing your profits, right? A lot of people, a lot of people say, oh it's just profit I'm risking. Eventually, it's not going to be a profit that you're risking because you you're you're going to be trading you're going to lose that. Um, GS was another stock I traded today, and you know today 
I hit GS pretty good, and then I put on a swing position. My day trade for GS, I hit that with 50%. Bought it for 80 cents, sold it for $1.21, had the 205 put on GS. GS was selling off pretty hard, pretty much all day. Um, had the 205 put, wasn't really looking for it to hit 205, just kind of come back down. It was at 946, about the 205 put, so 946 up in here. Yeah, right. Right on this candle right in here. So I caught I caught the wave a little late because I was I was kind of busy trading other things. Caught the wave a little bit, but stayed disciplined. 1054 sold it off before the reversal. So this one this one hit pretty nicely. What I wish I didn't do is I I was I'm going to you know for long term on GS I'm thinking that it's going to come back down to the 200 level. I probably should have waited for a bounce back. Yo Aaron, what's going on? Um, I should have waited for a bounce back because I'm down a little bit on that position right now. I bought the 200 puts for next week. I do think that we're going to come down lower, down back down to like 200, 202 area. I'll probably sell, <coughs> excuse me, I'll probably sell once we get down to like the 202, 203 area. I'm not looking for it to go like go 200 or sub 200 here, um, but I do think that it's starting to cap out over here. Um, but I should have waited. So instead of, you know, instead of going in, I went in. I sold at 10:54, and then at 11:02, I bought. I, I I bought more puts. Should have spaced it out more. Would have gotten a way better deal because then we went from 204 back up to 207. Would have got a way better deal um, on those on those 200 puts for next week. Where are you? Yeah, so I paid 98. They're now going for like 60 cents. So we're down a little bit, but I mean these went these went up to yes. I mean unfortunately, kind of caught the top there on pricing. So you know if you're kind of over traded it a little bit, kind of went in a little bit, kind of a little bit too early was was the thing. So you know, but you know for swing trading, as you can see, for swing trading, you don't necessarily have to be that accurate as long as it's a trade you still believe in the only thing you have to worry about more is time and theta versus the accuracy of pinning this like it doesn't really matter like after hours came down to like 205 it doesn't really matter if for a swing trade if i bought here versus here versus you know getting get, getting some um you know better deal it would have gotten a way better deal up here if i and i still believe in that 200 put would have gotten a way better deal up in here versus down here but I thought it was moving pretty fast. Market was green. This thing just kept ripping down. I thought, hey, this could actually see 202 today, 200 area today. So that's why I bought the put. Nick, would you please talk pros and cons, e minis, features, options versus spy? I mean, it depends on, you know, e the, the futures, you're going to, you, you have more availability. However, you're going to be paying more in commissions. I mean, you're going to be paying $2. Two to three dollars per trade versus like spy. If you're on Tastyworks, you could trade that um, for fifty cents a contract, dollar contract round trip, or a dollar thirty round trip on the other platforms now. How those two go along, and which one's easy to trade? So it, it's really they're about the same, but you you have to you have to you're going to pay more money trading the the futures. You're going to be paying more money in terms of in terms of contracts um commissions um cgc so kind of going into my swing trades right now ibm 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 cgc i have i have a couple swing trades on so i have ibm ibm what i'm looking at i have the i have the 130 puts for next week on ibm ibm bombed earnings of course you know, brought them back down to here. They they have been they have been descending for quite a few weeks here, but you know I'm looking forward to revisit down to like the 131, uh, 130 area by next week. You know, today was relatively flat. The one thing that the one thing about trading directly after earnings is sometimes you get a little bit more premium crush. Right now, you know, I bought them for 65 cents. I have two contracts. You know, I didn't go in very big for next week. Um, these are now down. 
they really just crushed the premium in there mainly because mainly because IBM after after we had the huge gap down went from 142 basically down to like 133 or 134 area I mean they just sucked the premium right out of that these went from you know I bought them for 65 cents which I thought I got a pretty good deal but now they're 36 cents so yo Julio what's going on so that's that's the thing when 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 after earnings of a stock stays the same they're gonna suck they're gonna suck the premium around these went from these went from sixty cents down to thirty four cents and this moved it did move a buck but I mean it was just it's just insane but there's still it's still a trade like for swing trading like I said you don't have to be that accurate in terms of your timing you don't really care too much about this daily chart if you still believe in if it's still going to go lower over the next course of the next week or two weeks or however long you have that trade and as you can see right here imply volatility just got crushed down pretty hard I'm looking at those cnbc alerts to see if this has anything pertaining to what we're talking about today whenever you get a cnbc push alert you gotta check it right guy <laughs> yeah, yeah you're right i left them upstairs by my bed though so for working at night so I don't have them with me today but yeah I do I do need them GDX GDX Theodoros all right GDX yeah I mean GDX GDX is ripping but it's making lower highs here as you can see so you know, really needs to break this 28 area, 28. Let's let's just call it 2850 to really try to reclaim to reverse this trend here. And then the next up is like 2970. It really needs to break the trend there. You know, as the movements, as the market goes higher, you'll see GDX starting to go lower. As you can see, um, you know, gold, gold was up a little bit today, which causes GDX to go up. Um, other things that were up like NGUT as well, um, but in terms of in terms of being as long as long as the market's moving up, I mean these are going to start start making lower highs. I mean these are all the kind of the, kind of all the same. You know these all are, are going to start. We need more fear in the market and more more. You know the the um, precious metals and stuff will start going up again but right now there's really no reason for them to um you know talking about spy you know kind of going into like the watch list and stuff like that you know it does look very toppy up here and really we haven't gone anywhere over the last few months except for down and then except for returning to these levels so we just got to be careful we've been very range bound here you know which is good for trading but we don't really have a catalyst i feel i don't know what you guys think leave a comment what you guys think about you know what catalyst is going to bring us over 300 over 302 over 305 310 320 you know what i mean like what what catalyst is going to push us over are we going to get a china deal or not man what's going to go on what, what what are we what are we going to do are we going to get a china deal i think the china deal is the only catalyst we have you know we're having other reports with an economic slowdown retail sales are down um manufacturing down I mean, what what is what's gonna take us? In my mind, we need that deal, and that deal is like a coin flip right now. It could happen, could not happen, and so far it's not been happening. So, you know, for for us to to move the market back up to here on a potential deal, but now we're getting capped out again, where there's a lot of seller, sellers up in here. You know, you have, you have to think about the people that have bought the top, right? The people that have been buying up here, you know, they're they're trying to get back to break even, right? People are trying to get back to break even. You know, people that get FOMO up here, they're trying to ride it, didn't sell. There's always going to be sellers up in here right now. So there's a lot of sellers up in here. So we need, I think we need a catalyst to really gap up like 305, 310 and really push them, push, push us higher. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are long-term regarding you know the stock market like that um, last but not least CGC another stock that I traded today um, CGC I haven't traded the weed stocks in probably I don't even know like a year or so 
I bought two of the 21 calls on CGC. Let's pull that, pull that bad boy up. It only cost 53 cents. I did buy next week expiration. These are currently like, let's call it 60 cents. So I bought them for 50 cents, they're up to like 64 cents right now. Um, but I was I was kind of looking at CGC that was re, we're gonna return to like the 2150 level. You know, one thing that I did like with the long-term chart here, I mean, this does look very terrible, but it is starting to make some, some um, higher lows here. So it's starting to make some higher lows here from 17, um, then 18, then 19, now 20. And I'm thinking that it could probably push to like 2250, 23 area right up in here. Just me, but I don't think the algos will let it go over or stay too much under what was estimated months ago about what your ends supposed to be. Yeah, I think the biggest the biggest threat right now to the stock market is the trade deal. And if there's no trade deal, I feel like the market could go right on the year. You know, we're not. Um, Trump said he's not going to sign any deal without meeting with President Xi, and that's not supposed to. Ha they're not supposed to meet till November. If that deal gets called off. I mean, if that if that meeting gets called off, we could be in trouble. Like like last year, now as you can see, let's go into the two year. Easy come, easy go, right? Um, like last year, we were having a pretty a pretty good year. We were ripping we were ripping pretty high all year. We came up to two ninety three, and. We actually, this was in October of last year and September of last year, and because of the trade war and all that stuff, we act, we were up on the year. We actually closed the year red. We went down at, what was the last day of the year? Uh, two, two, so we, the last day of the year, December 31st, we were like 246. So we went from 290 down to 246, in two months so the same thing like, like I've done the research on this before and in the last 50 years there's only been like two occurrences that we've had two red back-to-back -back years we had a red year last year because of this as you can see we had a humongous sell-off if we have two red back-to-back -back years that's gonna say that's gonna that's gonna that may determine the, the election honestly China does not want to deal until all tariffs are removed. Yeah, Trump's not removing the tariffs. I don't think. I mean, he might, but that means he's going to go soft. But he 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 loves the billions of dollars that are filling up the U.S. Treasury right now with tariffs. So whatever that means, wherever that money goes, I mean, I don't know. You know, but right now, what we do know, what we do know is what the number is. We do know what the number is right now, and the number is 299.28. And we do know that it's at the top of the range, so we need to be careful, we need to be mindful. Sure, you know, we do know that the forces that be, such as Trump, will want to push this. He's gonna to want to push the stock market as high as possible. As you know, based on his tweets, he wants to push the market higher, but we don't, you know, Trump tweets only get us so far. You know, as you guys know, Trump tweets have mostly been pump and dumps. <laughs> you know, the Trump tr Trump tr Trump tweets are penny stock pump and dumps. I mean, yo, Matthew, good to see you here, man. Matthew's an OG. He's been watching the stream for a long time. Never sold Roku. Well, hope it works out. Hopefully, you gap up to one forty five or something on Roku. Tariff money goes to market prop. Yeah, like I said, like the one, the one, like I said earlier today in Discord on on the spies, like when when it started falling here, we had this four million, this four million volume candle right here. You know, this was the Fed, this is the Fed buying the top right here. You know, we were dropping, we were gonna drop hard. Fed bought in, <laughs> Fed buying the top here. In all seriousness, trying to data overnight, likely to move the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and um, the one thing that I will say about you know, us wanting, the, like the U.S. wanting to harm China's economy, you know, Trump has been touting like, oh yeah, we're doing a lot of harm to China's economy, we're slowing them down, they're feeling the pain, they're feeling the squeeze. 
But globally, they're the you know second biggest economic power in the world. Globally, that's going to have a ripple effect on other countries and the global economy, which eventually will come back in turn and harm the U.S. So it's going to come full circle. So, you know, yes, we're maybe harming their economy short term, but long term, we potentially are hurting our economy. You know, we're, we're, we're yet to find out because... And then tomorrow, EU tariffs are going to go into effect as well, which they're threatened to retaliate as well, which there hasn't been much press on. Um, where is the EU tariffs? There hasn't been there hasn't been much. I don't know where the um, there has been like no. There has been no news on it. So we're supposed to have some tariffs on the EU coming in tomorrow. Um, and, he, and the French finance minister warned that if American tariffs take effect on Friday, Europe will ha not have any other choice but to take market measures. Or take measures, not market measures. So, you know, so we're, we're going to have we're going to have tariffs on the EU with planes and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we know Trump. Trump said that, you know, it's it's something that's been in motion over I don't know how many years it took. It took a long time with the WTO to get these tariffs in place, and they've just coming in. Just I mean, Trump didn't put these in, in uh, he didn't he didn't start them. Let's just say he didn't start that the the process for getting these tariffs with the WTO on the EU, but they are ending with him, <laughs> so he's going to take the credit, right? Um, I'm just trying to find. Oh, here's a here's a here's a news article here from yesterday. So I don't know why this is not being talked about this more in the media. I guess it's I guess it's not that exciting in terms of um, you know a U.S. trade war with the EU puts the world straight into a session. I mean this is this is this is going to be some interesting things. So this is this, these things are happening right now, whether whether the media is talking about it or not. China just weaken their currency and they can wait him out. Other world economies are emerging markets like Germany. As a chef, the European tariffs are going to kill me on the Italian cheeses. Yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be this is going to be this is going to be a thing. Like the EU tariffs are going to be a thing, but they're not talking about it yet. So that so nobody cares, right? It's not happening unless people are talking about it. That's what. Uh, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say. It. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> it's probably a bit risque for the for the stream. He didn't start the fire. <laughs> yeah, um, a, a tariff battle would particularly hurt small agricultural producers and manufacturing businesses. U.S. tariffs on seven and a half billion worth of European products are currently scheduled to take effect Friday, which is tomorrow. October 18th. So, so far this has not been called off. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be some headlines on this tomorrow regarding regarding the tariffs. Back in May, the EU had published its own preliminary worth of list of American products worth $20 billion that could face future. So yeah, they're going to retaliate. They're going to retaliate on, on these. I mean, they're not, going to, they're not going to take these. So if everyone's tariffs are going up, if everyone's going to retaliate, I mean, who, who, who wins? Who loses? And, and and I'm not talking about immediate. I'm talking more like long term. Who who's gonna lose on this? You know that we can't. I mean, not to get too political, but you know you can you can bully your way all you want, but eventually there's gonna be a lot of people that get hurt. You know, and I'm not just talking about like traders or investors. I'm talking about just like every every you know normal person working every normal person who has a job who relies on like like matthew was saying like like going to an italian restaurant or any restaurant that uses italian cheeses you're going to be paying more money for that so then you might think hey do i need to go to this restaurant and eat out you know it's going to have a lot of, it's got to have, got to have a lot of impact in a lot of different sectors so um 
I don't I don't know why I don't know why they're not talking about this. GM will remain on strike while voting. Let's see if anything is going on with GM after hours here. Doesn't really. Terminex was nice, but I canceled it over this tariff tariff crap. Yeah, I mean it's it's um I think I think long term we're we're gonna be feeling the effects of this for quite some time. Long term, you know, right now we're capping out, but long term, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, it's gonna really show the impact of what these tariffs done done, you know. So you know, as traders we just have to be aware and we have to you know the just because the market is up right now near all time highs doesn't mean that that's true in terms of in terms of what the actual environment is right now. The market does what it wants to do, but you know in terms of politics and tariffs and the economy, you know the market could be lagging behind or the market could be ahead or the market could be on point so wh wh which are we are we ahead are we behind is the market behind right now and we actually should be down here or are we like you know we we are ahead and we're about to launch you know we're about to have a deal with China and we're, we're, we're priced right correctly. So that's the thing. Anyways, we're coming up in an hour here, guys. I think I rambled up. We had a lot of trades to cover today. You know, if you guys like the stream, like the content, definitely hit the like button. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to talk in more detail, I'm in Discord pretty much all day, every day. Hit us up in the Discord. Links are below in the description for that. And as always, stay safe, stay green. It's us versus herd.